Just like a shark pursues its prey, ruthless standardization and simplification has a place. Find out more on HP Tech Talk. Welcome to this episode of HP Tech Talk. I'm Andy McCaskey from STR News. And in this series, we look at some of the ways that Hewlett Packard is defining a new style of IT. We talk to folks from the server portions of HP, networking, storage, cloud. And then from time to time, we're able to talk with people from Converge Systems that bring many of these topics together into one package. And uh, we're able to do that today. We have Mr. Brent Allen, who is uh, joining us. Yeah, so um, I think last time we actually talked was probably back in the summer. And um, Converge Systems was pretty new at that time. We had just, we were still uh, using our virtual system uh, branding and, and rolled out a system there. Um, really the whole point of Converge Systems is trying to make the entire process more efficient for, for us, for our partners, for our customers in sort of a 360 degree view around the entire product. And um, so back in December, we launched our Converge System 300 and 700, which are our sharks. Um, these sharks are really purpose-driven systems for virtualization, but they're not silos, right? These are not uh, you know, the, uh, the appliances of old, if you will. Um, while they've been completely optimized for virtualization and they're focused around, you know, the IOPS that are provided inside of the system um, and end-to-end -end dynamics um, around, you know, not just performance, uh, but how we go through from an ops perspective, driving value to the customer. They're based on common, what we call core platforms. And these core platforms underlie the entire portfolio. What would be an example of uh, some of the applications that these uh, systems focus upon? Yeah, so inside of Converge Systems, we look at things fairly holistically across the data center, and we look at what customers are trying to drive from an application standpoint. We're generally aligned around you know, just a handful of specific use cases that are our targets. One is server virtualization. Um, another is client virtualization, VDI. Um, then we have data, um, and that stretches from big data. Think of you know, Hadoop and those types of uh, applications and deployments all the way up through large systems that may be based on SAP HANA, for example. Um, and then we have cloud, and cloud kind of permeates everything. We make all of those things extensible to cloud, and that's either through our own HP cloud system, um, what we're driving with cloud OS and the OpenStack uh, direction, um, as well as you know partner cloud through VMware, Microsoft, and others. As you're working to deploy these, certainly you, you must be working very, very closely with a number of partners then. Oh, absolutely. Um, we've had a lot of investment from a lot of different partners uh, into this section of the portfolio. Um, you know, more time and focus than, than anything, which is I think what we really want. Um, and by extension, you know, you can take that from ISV partners through to our channel partners who have really internalized this message. Um, we've seen huge growth and in interest from both customers and, uh, and our channel partners in driving these types of solutions because it's so, they solve a number of issues for them. Um, you know, the speed of deployment, for example, you know, we're able to drive a complete system to deployment in 20 days in the case of our, um, our, our smaller Shark, our CS300. Um, we're able to uh, provide very rapid quote time, which helps the customer to take that through their own process. It helps the partner in actually translating that into sales. Um, it's all about you know efficiency of design throughout the entire process. So Brent, what is your go-to-market uh, strategy for the Shark product line? Yeah, I'm glad you asked. Um, you know, what we're trying to do here is really put together a uh, channel first model. Uh, it's a little bit different than some of the things that we've done inside of HP, but it's the right strategy for us and for our customers. There are strong relationships there. Uh, those channel partners have a lot of depth of knowledge that we highly respect inside of a lot of different industries and verticals. Um, 
And so it's really a partnership between us, our channel partners, and our customers. I think that you did indicate that this was really a kind of a, um, a change of strategic direction in looking at these systems. Uh, could you explain that? Yeah, I think, um, you know, we, we I, don't, I wouldn't call it a change in strategic direction. I would call it more of an evolution. So HP, uh, a few years back, coined the term converged infrastructure, and that has really caught on in the market. Um, people understand the value of converged infrastructure and bringing the pieces together. But what we've done is we've taken it up now to a system level where we're able to drive even more value, right? We're able to drive support value end to end. We're able to drive integrated deployment, balance systems, the way that people bring these in, the way that they scale them and expand them across their data center. All of those things are sort of net new value add that we're bringing in the form of converged systems. So. It's a way for customers to really um, execute on the value that a converged infrastructure brings. So how is that addressed over the entire product life cycle? Yeah, so it really starts from, you know, up front when a customer recognizes that they have a project coming online that they need to address. Um, because we have these systems that are pre-optimized, tuned, and engineered for what they're looking for, they can move through that process much faster without having to worry about the underlying components that are inside of that system. It really is not a collection of products or components at that point. It's designed as a single product. And you know that makes a huge difference right there. So it, make, it means that they can move through that process up front much faster. Um, there are economics as far as, you know, uh, dollars and cents uh, efficiency for the customer. We're able to provide, you know, uh, financing up and down across these systems that we weren't able to do before uh, for converged infrastructure. There are a lot of different things that we're able to do to help that upfront process. Once that goes into the you know, point of actually um, landing an order, it means that we can build the system faster. We can get it into production faster for them. And that's real time to value. That's real dollars um, that they're looking at saving. Um, it saves them a lot of consulting fees. It saves them a lot of you know days where uh, there may have been downtime or dead time in that project. Um, and it's all about making them more competitive and more efficient as they go forward. Has there been one that has been more uh, uh, more popular than, than others? Well, we're seeing a variety of things. Um, we've got a lot of uh, expertise inside of HP around Microsoft applications and deployment of them um, on top of these converged systems. Um, so we have something inside of the portfolio that we call App Maps. This is yet, uh, yet another net new concept, and it's effectively reference architecture that we're building uh, around a workload that sits on top of the converged system. So rather than you know, a traditional reference architecture is basically just a blueprint, it's unsupported, it really kind of can't be deployed in a um, systematic fashion. Because we're able to land these workloads on top of the converged systems, all of the goodness of the system comes along with it. The support, um, the integrated deployment, all of the things that we're working with our channel partner community. I would say that there's a growing number of applications. Certainly we see customers moving more and more in the virtualization space towards virtualizing tier one applications. And so we'll see more of that as we go forward. Um, there's a lot of interest in things like database uh, you know, deployments, especially virtualized database deployment. So a lot of areas where customers previously were shy about deploying um, application packages into virtualization, we're seeing that go away and we're starting to see that movement in the market. Um, it's typically all your normal cast of characters, um, but it's definitely you know a, a big push. It's not localized to a given set of applications. We really see these as foundational building blocks for the data center so that you can and should run any application on top of this standardized infrastructure and build that out across the data center. That's really where the value is, is not having to have siloed architectures that you're having to manage differently and that you're having to support differently. Uh, I have to think almost of, of cloud maps that you would use uh, in, in that application. Very similar to cloud maps. And one of the reasons that we've built our sharks with a balanced approach for virtualization is because the intent is that for many of our customers, the next step is an extension to cloud. And the proper architecture to create the base for that cloud is having a balanced environment across the data center. 
so that you can really use these things as pools of resources across compute and storage and networking, so on and so forth. So initially, if you're not in a cloud system architecture, you can use the app maps and that'll give you the deployment guidance, and sizing and tuning for the applications. And we see those going into, you know, um, multi-workload environments really across these systems. The next step then is, you know, making a move to something like cloud system where you're using automated uh, and orchestrated deployment of those workloads inside of the environment. Yeah, you know, I uh, saw where you had over 1,100 uh, customers that had already taken advantage of, of just the, the, the cloud-focused uh, uh, converged system. Oh, absolutely. And we're seeing uptake all across the portfolio. So, you know, the, the virtualization sharks are a, a big stepping stone for a lot of customers um, that are moving in that space. Uh, the other thing is there are, there are a lot of customers that are not yet ready for cloud, and that's okay. We really want to take them through the proper maturity model so that they can be successful with the deployments that they have. And, um, you know, like I said, there, there are a lot of customers that are just focused on virtualization and some level of automation within that architecture, and that's where sharks fit. They're purpose-built. You know, the whole point of the, the shark uh, naming is that the sh sharks are the most efficient hunting machines in the world. And that's exactly what we set out to build right here with these systems. Um, they are the most efficient systems for virtualization. And when I say that, I'm, I, I'm talking about the hardware and the infrastructure, but it's beyond just what we would normally consider the product package. And it really extends to everything across that life cycle because we see a lot of customers get eaten up time-wise with how do I migrate? How do I, you know, take this out of my system and move to something to, to the next version? How do I bring it into my environment in the first place? All of those things, how do I back it up? How do I do, you know, um, disaster recovery? All of those things are things that we're rapidly addressing inside of this context with a converged system that is a singular product. Where would people go for more information uh, on Converge System? One of the things, one of the mantras that we use inside of uh, Converge Systems is ruthless standardization and ruthless simplification. And you can find out more about it at www.hp.com slash go slash Converge System. Brent, thanks very much for joining us here today. And uh, thanks to you folks for joining us also. We'll see you next time on HP Tech Talk.